Hi, I'm Ben Hanawal, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look down in the software. Today we're going to be talking about the Configurations tab on the Power Focus 6000. So if we follow along in the software, the Configurations tab is going to be the middle row right side, and if we click into it, we're going to see a lot of different options. Now, a couple of things to note about the Configurations tab. All of the configurations that we are creating in here are essentially just exactly how they're described. They're configurations, but in this tab, we are not assigning any of these configurations. So if we're creating a tool configuration, we need to actually assign that within the virtual station menu. The same thing goes for all of the accessories, indicator boxes, general virtual station settings. So keep that in mind. This is just where we create the configurations. So the First, and probably the most important, would be our Tool Configuration. The Tool Configurations tab is actually probably one of the more important, and the main reason for this is on the Power Focus 6000 platform, we can use up to any type of tool. We can use cabled tools, battery tools, impact tools. We can use mechatronics wrenches. We can use clutch tools. So with all of these tools, we need to make sure that we have a unique tool configuration for each different tool type we're using. So if we go up to the top right corner and we hit the plus button, we can actually create a new config. And when I come in here, I'm just, in this example, going to create one for a cable tool. So creating a configuration for a cable tool, the main thing that I want to point out is you need to filter by the tool type. Now if I click into the edit button, you'll notice there's a bunch of settings in here that do not apply to a cable tool, like tag checking. This would only be used on an ST wrench and an inactivity timeout, that would only be for a battery tool. So if I don't filter by the tool type, I'm gonna have all these settings that essentially don't do anything for the cable tool. So if I hit filter by tool type, and I filter it by a cable tool, what you'll notice is, by clicking back in, I have very, very few in here now. Now I only have the settings and configurations that are gonna apply for a cable tool. So in here, the really important things to note, if we want to assign anything for the tool LEDs or buzzers or directional switch, this is where we're going to assign those. This is where we turn on the traces. So that's a very common question on the Power Focus 6000. You turn on traces in the actual tool configuration tab. So for this example, we can turn on traces. Start condition. So if we're remote starting a tool, this is actually where we're going to set it up for a remote start. This is where we also set up if there's a scanner on the tool, EHMI on the tool, we can lock out certain settings. ST selector, so we can set it to tell us the torque or the angle that's being reported, things like that. So the tool configurations tab is a really important one. We need to make sure that we create a unique configuration for each tool type that's going to be running on the controller. Next tab down, we have internal I.O. So this is where the next couple of accessories, they become kind of repetitive because they're all very similar looking. So when we look at the internal I.O., this kind of gives us a little picture of what the accessory looks like. This is on the inside screen of the Power Focus 6000 itself. And this is where we can assign different settings in here. For example, if you wanted to select a tightening program from in here, you can select it in here. So we could select uh, tightening programs. We can have it report out an OK or an NOK things like that. So this is actually where you would assign all of that, right? So, so this would obviously only be for one because there's only one internal I.O. But for all the other accessories, we could have multiple I.O. expanders, multiple operator panels. And so what we can do is you can actually create separate configurations for each one. So we could have different configurations for different I.O. expanders, for different tools that are connected to the virtual station. So in this example, when we click in, you'll notice that it's very similar to the internal IOs, and this is where I mentioned that it might be a little repetitive. Essentially, when setting up these accessories, it's all going to be very similar IO points that we're using to select. So it's the same options in here as internal IO. If we were to move on to maybe something a little different, like an operator panel, you'll notice there will be some different options. So we'll have the option to maybe set up a horn, right? So T, we can actually set up different sounds, but they're all gonna be very, very similar. And uh, so this is really the idea behind the configurations tab on the Power Focus 6000. 
Now selecting through them, there's a couple of unique items like in a stack light we can increase the amount of different colors or height of the stack light. So things like that make certain ones a little bit unique, but ultimately they're pretty basic and pretty intuitive the way that you would program these different configurations. Socket selector is slightly different and I'll show you why. So if I was to set up a socket selector on the PowerFocus 6000, uh, the main thing to note is we have a control option and control being set to auto, this is gonna be used for the majority of applications and this is the default. If I was to switch it to external, that would be used if you are selecting using open protocol or field bus to tell the operator which socket to pull. So if you're actually flashing a certain socket type from a field bus or from open protocol, you would have that set to external. For all other applications, you're going to leave that set to auto. And if I click into edit, you're going to notice all we really have the option to do in here is turn on or off specific sockets in the tray. The specific socket that would be associated with each specific program would be done in the sources menu. And there's actually a completely separate video showing you how to do that for the sockets. We have all of our different settings in here. We have indicator boxes, which is, you know, like I said, very similar to all the other configurations. One and very important that we have is going to be our general virtual station settings. And this is a really important one, mainly because this is where we would set up our tightening settings. So we have the ability to lock or unlock the tool based on OKs and NOK tightenings. And we also have the ability to disable tightening or disable loosening. So if a customer wants to disable tightening or loosening on a tool, they actually have the ability to do that in this tab. We also have the ability to filter our results for reporting purposes. So if we don't want to report loosenings, we can actually turn that off in this general virtual stations tab. But that's actually all there is to the configurations tab. It's pretty basic. Keep in mind that these configuration settings, we're creating the templates here, and they would be assigned in the virtual station menu. So if you advance on to the virtual station, there's actually a video about virtual station settings, you'll actually see where all of these configurations are assigned in the controller. So with regards to the configurations tab, I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your Atlas Copco marketing team and we can try and get you some answers.